Welcome back. Functions are the hardest part of JavaScript, and it will take some time to fully get it. However, in this video, we're going to try and do that. We're going to learn JavaScript functions. So let's start off with what are functions? Well, they're pieces of code that perform actions. Without functions, JavaScript wouldn't really do anything. The beauty is that functions can perform one action or multiple actions. But we'll get back to that. First, let's talk about how you already know some JavaScript functions without even realizing it. You've seen them before. Alert, that's a function. Prompt, that's a function. You've seen these before. So JavaScript provides for us some functions that are really, really useful so that everybody who writes JavaScript can use them without having to write them over and over. So with functions, we have two options. One is using existing JavaScript functions like alert and prompt. And two, we can create our own. So before we get into how we create our own functions, and what is so useful about them, you might have noticed one thing, these brackets that are right next to each other with functions. What, what do they mean? Well, that in JavaScript means to execute the function. So let's see if what happens when I just type in alert and press enter. I get F alert and some weird stuff. Hmm. F over here stands for function. You can see when I hover over it, it says function alert. This is what running a function means. In order to run alert, I execute it by calling it like this. So these brackets mean calling a function. So I can call a function. And you also notice that within alert, I can add things like Hi there. These are called arguments. And I know I'm throwing a bunch of jargon, a bunch of words at you, but these are just things that you'll hear over and over when you're a developer and they'll stick to you. It won't the first time, but like I said, just try and get there one step at a time. So arguments are what's given to functions. For example, when we did in our example here, hello in the console log was an argument. And the interesting thing is that you can have multiple arguments. For example, if I remove this and just have, let's just have console log for now, I can do, how are you? I save and refresh. And I get, hello, how are you? See, I can have multiple arguments, but just adding a comma. But again, that depends on the function. Now, again, before we start creating our own, let's review. Alert is a function. Alert with the brackets, I am calling the alert function. And I am calling the alert function with the argument, hi. Alert needs to be called, otherwise it's just sitting there. Now, the big reason to use function is that you can call them as many times as you want. Think about alert. Imagine having to say every time, hey, computer, create this pop-up window and print whatever argument I put in every time. I mean, that would really suck. Isn't it nice that we can just call alert and that pop-up window pops up for us and everything's done for you? Well, that's pretty much what functions do. They make life easier by having actions bundled up so you only write them once and then you can just call it. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. Let's create our own functions. So if we go back to our document here, let's see, right here, we have two ways of creating functions. I'm going to show you the first way. 
Hmm, actually, I'm going to show you this one first. So let's create our own function using the first method, which is function declaration. And we're going to use our script JS here that's linked to our HTML that we did in the previous video. So here, I can say function say hello is console.log. Hello. Again, the syntax is a little bit different, but you just have to remember it. I'm saying function is going to be called say hello. We have those brackets that are very familiar to us. And then console log hello. Let's see what happens when I save. I refresh. Hmm. Nothing happens. Why is that? Well, we declared this function, but remember what we did with alert? Well, it exists, but we haven't run it. We have to call the function. So we have to say, say hello, like so. And now when I refresh, I get hello. So think of this with the variable. When I say variable a equals five, that's not going to do anything until we actually get the a. And that's when it prints five. Okay, so that's one way. What's the second way of creating a function? The second way is called function expression. And it goes like this. I can say variable say by equals function console.log by. Again, I'll save this and refresh. And again, we only get hello because, well, again, we have to call that function. So I say, say bye, run it, and refresh, hello, bye. Now, one thing you may have noticed here is that we're assigning this function to the say bye variable, but what is the name of the function? I mean, here, clearly, function's name is say hello, but here, we're, we're just assigning to the variable. I mean, technically, the function doesn't have a name. And this is called an anonymous function. We've assigned this function to say by so we can reference it through say by. But otherwise, we can't really access this function. Well, you'll see why that's important in later videos. But you could technically do this and call this function bye bye. Okay, so now that we know how to create functions, why do we need these arguments? Remember, why do we need stuff inside of the brackets? I mean, these look useful enough, right? Well, let's try something. Sing, let's do a function, sing. And this thing will have, will have console.log, and I'll say, ah, uh, that's, that's me singing. And it also have console.log T. This is how I sing. Now, if I save this and refresh, make sure it still sings. Oh, I have to call it. Let's refresh. Beautiful song, ah, uh, T. But now, Every time I want to change to a different song, maybe I wanted to say la di da, well, I have to either delete this and change this to la di da, or I have to create a new one calling sing to console.log. And you can see over here how annoying that is that I'm typing the same thing over and over and just changing these things. And now I have to run sync 2 and I refresh and whew, that was tiring. Okay, 
I did all of this and now imagine if we had thousands of songs that we want to sing we're Spotify and we want to display all the song lyrics I mean that's pretty pretty tiring right and one of the rules with developers is is this idea of dry do not repeat yourself ideally you want to make things as efficient as possible and one thing you can do is by adding arguments so I can add something like song and now let me just delete this for now in the console log I can just say song so now anytime I want to change the song I can say la di da sing Hello, and then sing back streets back. All right. So now I save and refresh, and look at that. You see how many lines of code we just saved, and how I can now use sing anytime I want, and I can customize it to what I want, kind of like alert. That's what arguments do. Arguments allow us to not repeat ourselves and make our functions what we call more extensible. They can be customized. Let's do one other thing to learn a fun thing about functions. We're going to delete this and try function multiply and we'll give it a and b. So it'll accept two arguments and we'll do a times b and now within a times b we'll say multiply and it will call multiply 5 10. save and refresh and now we should have multiply available to us you can see over here multiply a b a times b exactly where we wrote okay so what happens if i do multiply 5 and 10. What do you think I'll get? Let's see. Hmm. That's really weird. Let's try that again with a different number. Still undefined. Why is that? Well, this is called debugging. Let's see if we can figure out what's happening here. I'm going to do a console log here and I'm going to log out A and B to make sure that this function's actually running. So I'm going to save and refresh. Okay, console log A and B. Let me just run the function again. Console log. Okay, so it looks like it's running, but then I'm getting undefined over here. Well, I can show you this in a diagram. So a function is an input we give it some sort of an input. Maybe sometimes it's empty, so that's whatever is in the bracket. In our case, it's A and B. So those are numbers, so 5 and 10. And then the function does whatever we tell it to do. In our case, it was to multiply 5 and 10. And then we get an output, but we're not getting that output. Why is that? Well, because a function works like this. And don't worry, I've just added a bunch of arrows, but I'll go through everything and explain it to you. The input is receiving 5 and 10. The function does some stuff. And up to this point, we've only done console log. And the way console log works is the function is saying, yep, yeah, just log it to the console in the browser. But we've never done it where we've returned a value. And let me show you what I mean. When we don't return something, we get undefined. When we return something, we get the value. So let's see over here if we can explain this. So here, whenever I'm saying multiply 10 and 5, and I'm going to remove the console just so it doesn't confuse us, save and refresh, I get undefined. That is because as you see in this diagram, we're not returning anything. So in JavaScript, the way you return things is 
you have to put in return inside of a function. So now it's going to return a m times b. And you see that it's a it's a special word in JavaScript. It highlighted in red. Well, now it's saying, yep, we're going to return the value. So even if we added console log, it'll do console log and then ask, hey, do I have a return? If I do, I'm going to send it a value. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Let's see if it works. I'm going to save and refresh. And now if I do multiply 5 and 10, I get 50. Yay, we got our function working. And that is a very important key concept that we need to remember is that we need to return something from a function. I mean, we don't have to, but ideally we do so we don't get these cases where we just have undefined and we don't know what the function does. It's kind of like a black box that does something and we might get a console log or not, but we don't know what's happening inside. It's nice to have a return to make sure that the function acts the way we expect it to. Okay, what if we do something like this? What if I do return a, and I forgot a semicolon in here, and return b? What do you think will happen? Let's refresh and run this. Okay, what if I change the order and I put a first? Let's try that again. I get five. And return is the final way to end a function, if that makes sense. So as soon as you say return in a function, the program exits. So to go through this, I say multiply five and 10. It goes to the function and says, yep, I have the function multiply. I'm going to put a as 5 and 10 as b. And now it goes into the function and says, return 5, which is a. So it returns that and it exits the function. So now these two lines aren't being run at all. The program simply reads this, goes to here, reads the first line of the function, and then exits. So in a function, you should have one return statement. Or is that right? Let's see a case where that might not be correct. Let's add an if statement to this. Let's say that we want to do multiply, but we're also kind of lazy and we don't want to be too hard with the computer. So let's say we want to say that if we remember the if statement, if a is greater than 10, or if b is greater than 10, we can say return that's too hard. Otherwise, we'll return a times b. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to save and refresh. Let's do multiply 5 and 4. I get 20. What if we do 5 and 40? I get that's too hard because now it's reading the function 5 and 10 and it's saying, hmm, b which is 40 is higher than 10 so according to the if statement i'm going to that's too hard and because a return exits the function it never gets to this even if i do return a times b it'll never get there because the return exits the function just to double check let's do that let's do 5 times 40, and it never gets to any of these lines because as soon as it sees a return, it exits the function. I know it's a lot, and we'll get to why these things are important in the next couple of videos, but I wanted to also show you that you can have inner functions. So in JavaScript, functions are variables. And what that means is that we are able to assign functions like this, right? 
And if we did something like this, well, we can call A in the same way that we did. And we just assigned function as variable. So technically, we could do something like this. So let's have multiply. Let's go back to the way we had it. We'll leave multiply the way it is in the simple form. And we can actually say alert multiply. And then here we'll do three and four. And I know that's a lot of brackets. Don't worry, we'll go through it. But let's just save this and refresh and see what happens. I get 12. Because what's happening is we're starting with the inner function. We're saying, hey, we want to alert something. What do you want to alert? Well, we want to multiply. We want to call this function and give it three and four. So it goes to multiply and it says, yep, yeah, I'll assign A and B to three and four and I want to return A and B. So now multiply gets changed to 12 and then we alert. So you see that now, instead of having something like total multiply four and five and then putting total here, we can just assign multiply into here. Whew, that was that was a lot, but I want to show you that we've we've tackled I think the hardest topic in JavaScript, which is functions, and we've also covered a return, well, which is very very good. The one other thing I want to show you is that a lot of people get confused with the terminology, and I don't think it's as important, but I just want to clarify it. There's the concept of parameters and arguments. Now, parameters and arguments kind of are, are very similar, but just slightly different. So arguments, as we've said, are four and five. So functions can have arguments and they get called with arguments. Parameters are what A and B is. So multiply has two parameters of A and B. I know that's a little bit confusing. You can read up on it a little bit more. I don't think it's important to really know the difference, but just so whenever you're reading articles or learning maybe through YouTube that you'll hear these words almost interchangeably, they pretty much mean the same thing, just a little bit slight difference in them. All right. I know, I know, I've thrown a lot of terminology at you, but after repeating it a few times, it will make sense. So stay strong, but that's it for function. It's time for you to try some exercises. Rewatch this video if you need to. You really want to make sure you understand functions since it will be the core of JavaScript. Just remember, what we are doing with functions is we are creating new words in the language, in the JavaScript language, so we can create variables or we can create functions to add vocabulary to the language. And up to this point, that's all we've been doing. We got this JavaScript that had a few words that we can use, and we've added new ones like multiply and total in order to make it more useful to us. And that's what programming is. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.